All right, so uh, to, to wrap up today, um, I'm excited for the encore presentation of our Diamond Dollars case competition winners, which is the team from Virginia Tech. And uh, the case, just as a reminder this year, was from an organizational perspective, what can a team do to improve on their starting pitchers getting through the third time in the order? And the teams were asked to consider really all factors, um, things like what could they do developmentally within their system? Uh, are there specific player types, specific pitcher types uh, that they should try to pursue either via trade or free agency? Uh, and is there, are there pitch mixes to be considered and, and try to encourage inside of their organization? Uh, and so our winning team uh, is going to represent what they uh, presented to the judges and, and won yesterday. Uh, and I got to give these guys, got to give these guys props for uh, after they were announced the winners yesterday. They'd been wearing suits all day. They went and had a quick wardrobe change and came back in the room wearing Virginia Tech gear, which was a great move. I got to say that was that was that was really well played. Uh, and so I'm thrilled to introduce Robert Doris, Harmon Takar, Jack Silk, and Ye in Israel from Virginia Tech. Hello everyone, I'm Matt Doris and I'm a senior at Virginia Tech. I'm majoring in industrial systems engineering and uh, computational modeling and data analytics. Hi, my name is Yayan Israel. I'm a senior at Virginia Tech and I'm majoring in computational modeling and data analytics. Hi, I'm Harmon Takar. I'm a junior. I'm majoring in electrical engineering. And I'm Jack Silk. I'm a senior. I'm majoring in industrial and systems engineering. And the fifth member of our group, uh, Jack Byrne, he wasn't able to be with us this weekend, uh, but he was really a key part of our group, uh, did a lot of the analytics for us. So first I'm gonna talk a little bit about the problem statement. So today in the MLB, there's an increasing emphasis of getting more innings out of starting pitchers. Uh, this both takes some pressure off of the bullpen, as well as with the new rule changes, could possibly allow for another uh, position player. However, very few pitchers in the MLB can effectively pitch three times through a batting order, and many pitchers have traits that are conducive to going longer in ball games, but are not necessarily, not necessarily utilizing their arsenal as efficiently as they could be. Finally, many underdeveloped prospects have the ability to improve with better zone sequencing and pitch utilization strategies. So the first objective of our project was to create a system to identify undervalued players uh, here we're defining an undervalued player as uh, someone that's outside of our organization that shows the ability to go far into games, but maybe has a low war and is someone that we can acquire easily. Secondly, we want to identify pitch characteristics that would maximize effectiveness the third time through the batting order. So these would be both pitcher control uh, characteristics like velocity and spin rate, as well as result-based characteristics like ground ball rate or strikeout rate. And finally, we want to look to develop pitching strategies based on zone sequencing, pitch utilization, and hitter characteristics. So the primary data we used for this project was 2019 MLB StatCast data that we uh, attained from Baseball Savant. The data set contains around 700,000 pitches. Uh, we initially analyzed pitch level data, such as spin rate, velocity, induced movement, and so on. And then we also generated fields for spin axis, number of times through the batting order, strikeout rate, whiff rate, take rate, ground ball rate, and fly ball rate. So we did some initial exploratory data analysis to kind of get a better idea of the data we were working with. Uh, so all of our analysis was done in R. So if you look at the image on the right here, you can see on the y-axis is all the, aver the average WOBA for all pitchers in the MLB, and then the x-axis is the number of times through the order. So if you look at that middle column, the third time through the order, you can tell that it kind of appears that that mean WOBA is greater than the first time through the order, which, for clarification, uh, a low WOBA, the lower the WOBA, the better for the pitcher. So we ran uh, two key multiple comparisons of means test to see if this was the case. Uh, we ran it with a significance value of 0 0.1, and with a p-value of 0 0.06, we found that there was, in fact, 
a significant difference in means from the third time through the order and the first time. Also during our data analysis, uh, we noticed that there were about 2% of the values for spin rate were missing. This came out to over 12,000 values. This was very important to us because uh, I created a lot of bias in our data because some pitchers had a lot of values that were missing where others had very few to none. So we used predictive mean matching uh, to impute values for, for spin rate. So we, we trained the model basically to compare uh, the, the pitch that was thrown without spin rate to other similar pitches based on pitch type, velocity, horizontal and vertical movement, and the right-handed and left-handed pitchers. So basically we were able to uh, uh, predict these values for spin rate. Also, as I mentioned earlier, we uh, created a value, or we, we, we created a field for spin axis. This was also very important to us as it was key for our analysis in our models uh, to uh, be able to classify pitchers. So the, the chart on the left shows the values in the equations used to derive spin axis. It was based on the uh, induced horizontal and vertical movement of each pitch. And then the image on the right can kind of give you a better visualization of how we're defining uh, spin axis here. And this is all from the pitcher's perspective. So we decided to go with WOBA as the main metric to focus on in our project as opposed to a metric like OPS. Uh, uh, WOBA stands for weighted on base average. Uh, and OPS, however, is a mixed fraction where it adds together the denominators of at-bats and plate appearances, which is generally not a great practice. So we chose uh, WOBA as it is a more, a more accurate measure of performance. And then the equation at the bottom is how StatCast defines WOBA. All these, those values come straight from that StatCast data set. Uh, you can see that it includes values for things like RBOE, which is runners that reach base on errors. And then the denominator is all plate appearances minus sacrifice bonds. So to go quickly through the process uh, we, we use when attacking this case, uh, first we looked to rank pitchers based on their WOBA depreciation. And then we wanted to identify undervalued pitchers that showed potential with going through a batting order three times. Then we wanted to find the pitch characteristics of those pitchers that allowed them to do so. And then finally, we wanted to look to improve pitch sequencing to targeted batters. And then some initial assumptions uh, with, with our project, we assume that all StatCast data is reliable and accurate. And we also assume that all pitchers hit their spots consistently throughout the game. And then finally, we assume that fatigue levels are constant among pitchers in the MLB. Uh, by this, we mean that uh, all pitchers in the MLB notice a very negligible amount of drop in things like spin rate and velocity over the course of a game. And now Matt's going to talk a little bit about the process we use to rank pitchers. So like Jack mentioned, the first part of our process was ranking the pitchers. What we did was, for each pitcher, we looked at the mean WOBA against each time through the order, and we compared each WOBA to find a significant difference. We used a two-sample two t-test uh, to compare the mean value the first time and the mean value the third time. And once we did that, we ranked each pitcher by the lowest p-value. Next, we wanted to find pitchers that wanted, we wanted to improve. These pitchers we, we develop with uh, a strategy that we come up with. So typically, we're looking for guys who are cheap and low war that are easy to acquire. So uh, pitchers who aren't as successful the third time in the order is really something we're looking for uh, for improvement. We ran the same t-test, except this time we flipped the null hypothesis. And we uh, are ultimately looking for a breakout candidate who we can really improve. So on the left, we have a pitcher like some, someone uh, like Dylan Cease, whose WOBA against decreases as he goes through the order. On the right, we have a pitcher like Andrew Heaney, whose WOBA against uh, increases as we go through the order. And really, with Andrew Heaney, we want to develop him. So up next, we want to find important characteristics that might be able to predict WOBA against. So we ran a regression analysis. And the first time through the order, the most important characteristics were pop-out rate and strikeout rate. Whereas the third time through the order, the most important characteristics were strikeout rate and ground ball rate. So once we compare the pitchers again, we see that Dylan sees his strikeout rate increases as the game goes on, whereas someone like Andrew Heaney, his strikeout rate decreases as the game goes on. So up next, we wanted to evaluate Andrew Heaney's characteristics. So what we did for that was we filtered his typical pitch characteristics for each pitch. Um, as we can see, uh, we looked at 
relative speed, uh, spin axis, and spin rate as the three most important metrics for this. And uh, this pitch right here is an uh, Andrew Heaney curveball, um, and it typically ranges from 77 to 80 miles an hour with a spin axis of 275 to 326. And uh, he's typically in the range of 2400 to 2700 for a spin rate. And uh, once we had those metrics for each pitch, what we did was we filtered the entire 2019 MLB data set based off of uh, the intervals for each of his pitches. That allowed us to have uh, more data to play with, and we had the ability to calculate the WOBA against um, whiff percentage, take percentage, and ground ball percentage. Additionally, we had the ability to filter through zone location and time through order to make sure our analysis was, uh, was better. So uh, that's just one part of the coin. We wanted to look at uh, similar batters so we can see like what game plan they should be taking for each specific batter. So uh, in order to evaluate the batters, we looked at strikeout rate, walk rate, distance, exit velocity, and launch angle. As we can see, the correlation plot on the left, um, distance, exit velocity, and launch angle are highly correlated. So we found out that distance is a function of exit velocity and launch angle, so we decided to scrap distance from the data set. Next, uh, we ran principal component analysis to find the, uh, the importance of each variable. As we can see uh, in the plot on the right, strikeout rate, um, exit velocity, and walk rate have the most uh, importance. So we wanted to find natural groupings among each batter, so we ran k-means clustering. Um, as you can see the table at the bottom, there's the average rate uh, for each cluster for a strikeout rate, walk rate, exit velocity, and launch angle. Um, what the data was telling us was that uh, cluster one consisted of players with low strikeout rate and low launch angle, typically your contact guys. Cluster two consisted of players with high walk rate and high exit velocity. <clears throat> Cluster three consisted of players with high strikeout rate, so typically lower performing batters. So we really wanted to put like a player's name to each data, data point. So uh, as you can see, the cluster in the red, we see players like D. Gordon, John Jay, um, typically contact guys. Whereas cluster uh, two in the green, we see guys like Anthony Rendon and Aaron Judge. Cluster three in the blue, we see lower performing batters such as Keon Broxton and Chris Davis. And uh, once we were looking at the, the results of the K-mean clustering, we see in the upper right corner, that's pretty much like the elite corner, um, we see players like Christian Yelich, um, Mookie Betts, and Mike Trout, um, sort of like the elite players, and that just uh, validates our clustering model. So um, really, we really wanted to look at batters in addition to pitchers so we could find the best plan uh, to ultimately uh, run a se pitch sequencing. So now, now we wanted to create a pitch sequencing strategy for players like Andrew Heaney, who are great at eating up innings but may deteriorate throughout the game. And then we wanted to apply this pitching strategy, pitch sequencing strategy, to uh, the different batting clusters we came up with and then change our strategies for each time through the order. To do this analysis, we use a StatCast data set. And for each pitch, there's pitch abbreviation and the zone breakdown. Here's the list of the pitch abbreviations that I'll be using. And the, for the zone breakdown, it's from the catcher's perspective. So if you're a right-handed batter, the inside of your strike zones can are the inside of your strike zone is going to be zones one, four, and seven. And so next, to do our analysis, we wanted to be able to quantify each pitch. And we did this by finding the WOBA value for each pitch. Uh, a sample calculation of this would be for a one-one count. We would take, at, for a 1-1 count where a strike's thrown, we would take the average WOBA value of a 1-2 count, which is around 0.18, and the average WOBA value of a 1-1 count, which is about 0.39, and take the difference, giving us a pitch value of negative 0.207. And we would do the same thing for events, uh, pitches that end in events. So if a hitter hits a double, the average WOBA value for a double is the WOBA value for the double, so it would be 1.25 minus 0.395, the WOBA value for a 1-1 one, one count, giving us a pitch WOBA value of around 0.83. And so for a pitch sequencing strategy, we came up with strike zone heat maps that show us the best next pitch given a uh, pitch occurred. So and we find these values by minimizing the 
average WOBA value for, the next, for each next pitch that the pitcher throws for every zone. This is an example of a strike zone heat map for Andrew Heaney, who threw a curveball in zone 13 against cluster one batters. And those cluster one batters are those contact batters, John Jay type batters, and it's specific for right-handed hitters. So if Andrew Heaney throws a curveball in zone 13, we'd recommend him to throw a two-seam fastball in zone two, a slider in zone 14, or a splitter back in zone 13. And we can see that the two-seam fastball, if he throws that after this curveball, he can expect uh, to lower his WOBA by about uh, 1.17. And you may also notice that some of these recommendations are not, don't go with uh, intuitive baseball knowledge. For example, a changeup up in the zone is not something we'll recommend to a uh, manager. And we believe, uh, given more data, these unusual values would eventually uh, be removed from our recommendations. And so now we wanted to break it down by each zone because Andrew Heaney type players are good at eating up, hit, eating up innings, sorry, but he deteriorates throughout the game. So we want to be able to change his strategy so he can effectively navigate through each game. And so for the first time through the order, Given that he throws a curveball in zone 13, we want him to throw a splitter in zone 13. For the second time through the order, a two-seam fastball in zone three. And third time through the order, a splitter in zone 13. And we believe this will be a great tool for catchers and pitchers to come up with a strategy before the game and see what type of pitches they want to pair with each other. And it would also be a great a great tool for managers to make pitch-by-pitch -pitch changes uh, throughout the game. And now I'm going to hand it off to Harmon to conclude our presentation. Thank you, Yade. So based on our findings, we concluded that Dylan Cease would be a great candidate to acquire via trade. He has five years of team control still left, which is valuable when trading assets for him. His high strikeout percentage and high ground ball percentage follow our model's philosophy. His WOBA improved each time through the order, which means his WOBA decreased each time through the order. Andrew Heaney, on the other hand, is a great ex example of a player that has potential to improve, someone that's probably in our organization that we would like to develop. We believe with our model and our pitching strategy, which would uh, emphasize better zone utilization and pitch sequencing, Andrew Heaney could be a reliable fourth and fifth starter. So Heaney and Cease are just two examples of pitchers who fit our model. These player types have two unique characteristic sets. A player like Cease is someone that we would go out of the organization to acquire, who has a diminishing WOBA, a low war, constantly gets to the order a third time, and has a high strikeout percentage and a high ground ball percentage. A player like Heaney is probably in our organization, whether it's the minor leagues or someone that's down in the depth chart. Um, a player like Heaney reaches a third time through the order, has a low WOBA typically the first time, as a prime example of someone that would succeed using our new strategy. So to summarize, finding players that could go late in games was one of our goals and someone that fit our model. Uh, using this, we wanted someone that improved each time through the order, like a player like Cease, or someone that we would implement our new pitch sequencing technique to improve them. We also integrated batting clusters into our pitch sequencing model. So as Matt said before, we had cluster one, which were the contact guys like D. Gordon, cluster two, which were the power hitters like Aaron Judge, and cluster three, which were the underperforming guys like Chris Davis. Acquiring a player like Cease and improving someone similar to Heaney will limit our bullpen usage and increase flexibility with utility players, which would give more flexibility with lineups, with our offense, and hopefully lead to more wins. So if we had more time, if we had more time, we would apply more metrics, such as BABIP, which is batting average and balls in play, and ISO, which is isolated power on the hitting side. We would find more pitching characteristics. We wouldn't limit ourselves to ground ball percentage and strikeout percentage. We would follow uh, pop-up percentage and fly ball percentage and things of that nature. We would obtain minor league data to find potential players. One thing that we realized during this process is minor league stack-cast data isn't readily available to us, which would have been key into finding people that we could develop for a team or people that we could acquire that for a cheaper price maybe. We would also select the next best pitch based on ground ball percentage or strikeout percentage. 
And we would have created a simulation that would optimize pitch sequencing to maximize every start. So this simulation would have had a pitch by pitch approach, which would have asked the user what to do, and it would have limited, uh, limited uh, runs and eliminated WOBA against. Thank you for your time. Any questions? Uh, with Dylan Cease, it seems I'm surprised he got to the second time through with his first time through. Woba was pretty high. Um, so I was just curious, all your pitch sequencing stuff was like really, really cool an analysis and everything. I was just curious what that would be like, you know, if I have a player like that, how do we improve his first time through also? You know what I mean? Because he had a very stark uh, difference. Yeah, so we wanted to focus our uh, analysis on improving players like Andrew Heaney because he deteriorates throughout the game. And yeah, as you mentioned, uh, Cease has a high uh, Woba at the beginning of games, but um, we, 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 he, he could also take advantage of like our pitch sequencing strategy, obviously, but uh, we think that he, he's probably Whatever he's doing now is a good answer, and we, we don't think he needs like as much improvement as a player like Andrew Heaney, where we we're concerned maybe he might dro start dropping off uh, again to the through the order three times. Uh, another thing to add there, uh, so our pitch sequencing model can basically work any time in the game. It doesn't have to be uh, the third time through the batting order. Uh, so with that, you can basically change the objective. So maybe his problem with the first time through the order is maybe he's trying to pitch to strikeouts too much, where he'd be better off trying to pitch to ground balls. So if we change that in the pitch sequencing model, uh, we could see some, some improvement there. So I noticed that the, uh, the, the Woba against actually decreases the fourth time through the order. Of course, that's because <clears throat> pitchers are it only is a smaller sample, and pitchers who are either pitching better from the start for the whole game, or those who just tend to be better are actually making it through a fourth time. Is there a way to isolate these trajectories, like filtering out just the, the games where we have a pitcher getting to the fourth time through the order to see if, if this is also a skill that can be detected, or are we only looking at the third time as the, uh, the indicator? Um, so yeah, l like you said, that is kind of uh, survival bias where usually the case is that guy is having a great game, so that's why he's able to pitch well the fourth time as well. Um, but also one thing to notice about that, um, if you notice, the box, was, uh, the box plot was really large, so it had a very high variance. Um, so it's kind of hard to, to uh, predict things like that that have a, a really high variance and a really low sample size. But yeah, um, theoretically, yeah, that is something you could look at with a larger data set, yeah. Yes, um, first of all, thank you. That was uh, super interesting, and congratulations for, for winning. Um, my question is about how do you deal with low sample size? So I, I actually hadn't heard of Dylan C, so I was looking him up while you guys were talking, and it looked like he has, this is his first year, and he only pitched, uh, or he only had 12 decisions. So um, how do you um, know what's just, you know, he's an extreme player because the sample size is so low, and so how do you evaluate him? Right, so what we did uh, to combat uh, small sample size for Dylan Cease, we looked at his specific pitch characteristics and found the middle 80% of his spin axis, spin rate, and velocity. And we looked at those values within those intervals throughout the entire MLB. And that gave us attributes about those specific pitches and how they did. And that's what we used to calculate like WOBA against and like other different factors. You were comparing two American League pitchers, and I wondered whether or not you gave any thought when you were looking at trying to pick people for this particular uh, sample, uh, gave any thought to uh, patterns that, their, uh, that managers and pitching coaches were following in managing their uh, starting, starting rotations. For example, Cease, with a bad WOBA, or at least a mediocre WOBA at the beginning of the games, 
was still given the opportunity of getting into that second and third uh, uh, time through the order. Is that something that might have uh, had something to do with his manager and or his uh, pitching coach versus how Heaney was handled? That probably has to do with how they wanted to utilize their bullpen. So uh, Cease is probably given more uh, leash just because uh, of the bullpen of the White Sox and how they're used. I imagine also that it has something to do with the American League, uh, the pitcher not having to bat. So maybe in the National League, that having a high Woba the first time around is penalized more so they can get another batter in the rotation. Uh, is it just the pitching sequence that would vary based on the type of hitter? No, the zone utilization would also vary based on the type of hitter. So to kind of, I'm not sure if this is going to answer your question, but uh, the reason we looked at those different uh, types of hitters is because if you're facing someone, um, you know, like Aaron Judge or Mike Trout, uh, you're probably going to want to pitch to, you know, ground balls more. Uh, it's not a guy you're going to try to, you know, strike out with a high fastball, something like that. As opposed to a guy like Chris Davis with a high strikeout rate, uh, you know, it, it might be worth uh, pitching to him to try to strike him out quickly, save some pitches, um, just because you can do that more effectively, save a, save a, uh, a ball in play, basically.